Hey y'all, M4 Ivy coming y'all with another Redneck YouTube video for y'all today. And today, i got something to show y'all. I've been working on, oh yeah, that's a W100. Bunch of shit in the back of it, and then it always happens when I'm working on these things. We're in the shop. Fairly fits. <laughs> but I didn't have that shelf, it'd fit all the way in, but. Show you what I've been up to. That there, so I get in a little closer. That is what in MP435 four speed looks like. And a 203 transfer case. And that is a piece of old seat belt holding up my drive line. But yeah. Got the clutch out of her. And there's something I wanted to show y'all. Okay. Now, as y'all know, the old girl's been needing a clutch for a while. And, uh, let me show you what the clutch looks like. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Get that light out of here. Here's the uh, springs. They're supposed to go in the dampener plate. That's those. Let's see. We got one. Two. Three, four, five, and six. That is what the clutch plate looks like. You guys want to know why that looks like that? Remember, I can see the focus. Would you see that blue mark around the pressure plate? This clutch had a hot spot in it. And a hot spot can be caused... Oh, five of them spring. But a hot spot can be caused by many things. Uh, the uh, most common is like grease on your clutch plate. And this is what I think will happen to this. Now, this is the clutch that was in the truck when it had the 318 before I did the motor swap. That's a piece of a starter that broke. Now, this isn't from hot rodding the truck. This ain't from doing burnouts. This ain't from drag racing. I mean, this looks like some shit you would see come out of a truck running like 450 horsepower at the drag strip. But, that was normal use. Caused by hot spot and yes that is probably a cheap ass AutoZone piece of shit replacement clutch Dural last my ass and here's my bell housing here's pieces of the throttle bearing but you can see had that piece of that star and all that shit flopping around in there, so I quit driving it. Look what it did. It marred that fucker up good. Yeah, I started taking the inspection plate off of it. But, it ain't cracked or nothing. It's still good. I'm a little sketched out about the fact that it runs an aluminum bell housing. Then again, too, this ain't a heavy duty truck. Here's my clutch fork. There's one piece of the throttle bearing. This one, if I can get it out. Let's see if I can get it out for you. Yeah. And guess this went. Oh. 
probably like so. And these must have come out of there. But nonetheless, it's all crap. Except for this. Yeah! <laughs> That's it happened to my clutch. Oh, I can't wait for all them fucking experts to come on and tell me that it's something else wrong with my truck. I know what's wrong with my vehicle. I'm not an idiot. Other things. Gaping hole in the floor. Transfer K shifter. The shifter for the tranny. All you gotta do to get them out. That plate right there. Just push on it and twist. And that plate will come up. And you can just pull the shifter right out top of the tranny. That's that. But yeah. That's uh, what happened to my clutch. I'm going to show y'all. Yeah. I have the radiator out of it right now because it makes it easier because I had to uh, loosen up the motor mounts which are down yonder. Oh, let me see them. Focus. Yeah, three quarter inch nut. Yeah, I had to loosen them up. Motor actually rocks back. Anybody's ever done a clutch job or whatever. Wires that I've been stripping. door up. Hoods. I take that green hood off. Gets to a 70s truck. It don't fit right. I'm going to put my 80s hood back on it. Door panels. Headliner. Yeah. The door panels I'm going to put on it. I just need another one. Half panel. That's out of a 81 to an 84. This door is off a 83. One way to tell, <clears throat> no pressure relief vent. It's made for the half panel. I got a, I don't know if you guys can see any. Got to get the fucking fuse box back up in place where it's supposed to be. Get some of the wiring cleaned up in here. Yeah. Got to love the 70s gas pedals, right? Those come off. I have a throttle linkage out of a 74 power wagon in here. Here's the tack. I took it out. I'm going to leave it out until I get it all wired up. All the wires are there, though. Good to have. Here's a 360. In all its glory. Took the PCM out that it was using for the throttle body. I got to go through and strip all these wires, but <coughs> that's mainly for cosmetics. Oh, wait, I'm going to get this thing running good. Um, it already runs good. I'm going to put a clutch in it and drive it and fix all the little problems. The fuel pressure regulator went bad. Focus. Mm, not going to cooperate. It's just one of those Mr. Gasket cheap pieces of shit. It blew all the seals out of it. Gonna put that bracket back on. Gotta line my alternator up, put the belts on it. Gotta put new belts on it. So I got that to do. Let's see what else I can find. Oh, this. That is a voltage regulator. This is for an 80s Dodge that runs carbureted. Now, if you're going to do the throttle body to carburetor swap like I did, you have to run a voltage regulator because this style alternator from 88 all the way to 93, those alternators were regulated by the truck's computer. And when you take the PCM out, this will actually overcharge, it'll put out, uh, I think it's around like 16 volts, 
it will cook batteries and it will burn coils. Even though I have a <clears throat> nice high dollar cell coil on this thing, this will cook a factory replacement coil. So you have to run a voltage regulator. <clears throat> it's real easy. You got splice in the three wires. Get the pigtail. Done. I'm probably going to mount mine. I don't know. Maybe I'll mount it over here somewhere. Be a good place for it. As long as the hood doesn't hit it. Then I can just run my wires along the firewall through that wire loop. And come out and tap right in. So I don't have a fucking wiring mess like a lot of people do. So, that might be a place for it. But yeah. Not a whole lot of work left to do on this thing. There's a bunch of shit I pulled out of it. Of course, the snorkel. Emissions control. <laughs> we don't need that. <coughs> AC lines. Nah. Anybody wants any of this shit, come and get it. More wire loom. I'm going to replace all that. Belts. This one is cooked. Yeah. Radiator sitting on top of the race car. But in reality, another week and she'll be back ready to go. Maybe not even that, a couple days. <sighs> I'm going to go to the junkyard and attempt to get new headlight buckets. Because these ones are all worn out. So they won't hold in the retaining screws so you can adjust your headlights. Yeah, I did a redneck fix. I just wrapped it in some electrical tape so it'll hold. This one flops around like a dead fish. So does that one. But I don't know. I'm probably going to have to get another core support. This is off an 86. Uh, the grill I have, which is the early 80s grill, which is the style I like. The headlights are actually in different positions, so I might replace this core support. Or I might cut it. Cut this out and move it, and it's going to move up and over. And I'll probably just weld it like that and then just add some sheet metal to fill it in. But yeah, not a whole lot of work to, to be done. Not to get a road worthy. So, yeah, just figure I'd show y'all. Progress report from the W100. Once we get that done, we'll put a hood on her and Call it a day. M4 Hobby Sam. Bye-bye.